So in 2011, those of you that were at Labour School, remember we interrupted proceedings because we were hearing some pretty horrible stuff coming at that time out of Wisconsin in the US of A. The governor of Wisconsin at the time was introducing some of the worst labor legislation uh, ever seen, uh, certainly in the Western world and certainly in the US. And we knew we had to be there to support them. They were in Madison, Wisconsin, where the state capital is. Uh, the citizens took control of that building and they occupied it. And they continued to have rallies and demonstrations outside of it. And we sent down a delegation from AEP. We decided that night we were going to do it. And I sent uh, former Vice President Glenn Scott down and uh, uh, Trevor Zimmerman, who's in organizing, and Andrew Hannon, who is in communications. And they were there to show AUP support for their struggle, in, workers' struggle in Wisconsin, and mostly public sector workers. And we've done a video of it. I think it's called Why Wisconsin Matters. It's on our YouTube. I, I really recommend watching it sometime. But the proudest part of that video for me, watching it back, is seeing Brother Glenn Scott standing in the middle of that state legislature, bringing greetings, holding an AUP flag, bringing greetings all the way from Alberta to these workers in struggle in Wisconsin. Because that's what solidarity is. Across borders, across states, it doesn't matter. When workers need each other, they stick together. And one of the most formidable leaders that we met when we were out there, and we met uh, a lot of them, we met uh, so many wonderful people, was a brother called Ed Sudlowski, um, who was working for AFSME, the, the public sector union at the time, and was in the front lines of this struggle. And over time, we've kept in touch with Ed. He's watched our struggles, we've watched theirs. But he is truly inspirational in, 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 in the work he's doing now, which is actually in Milwaukee, because now these workers are living under a regime uh, where they have no rights anymore. They have no unions, they've crumbled. And Ed is going to bring us a message, of war a warning message, because Jason Kenney and Scott Walker, two peas in the pod, and he's here to let us know what it's, what it's like and what we should be doing to fight back. It's a great honor to introduce Brother Ed Sadlowski, Deputy Executive Director of Milwaukee Teachers Education Association. Let's give Brother Ed a warm Alberta welcome. Sisters and brothers, fellow workers and comrades, I've been uh, with my wife, uh, 33 years, Emily, watching the proceedings from the back of the room and uh, looks a little more glorious from this vantage point. Um, can't begin to tell you uh, how humble it is to be here and we want to extend our congratulations uh, to each and every one of you for your successful and robust exercise in union democracy these last couple of days. <laughs> Emily and I made the journey here from our home in southern Wisconsin to say thank you with profound gratitude. Thank you for your determination and courage. Thank you for what you do every day on the job. And thank you for being an inspiration to us and untold thousands of other workers that you really don't understand the, how far your reach goes uh, by way of lifting and bolstering the spirit of others. Uh, as Guy has said, uh, when Governor Scott Walker dropped the bomb, his words, on working families in 2011, the clarion call to the nation was, as goes Wisconsin. Uh, during these proceedings, it's become rather obvious as I've observed and listened, uh, perhaps the new shout out shall be, as goes Alberta. And I'm saying that as a fourth generation trade unionist with a deep heritage in the steelworkers union. For the last 100 years, much like your proud heritage, members of our family, too, have fought and organized around the principles of clean, member-driven democratic unionism. For the better part of 40 years, I've had the distinct privilege of um, 
being a union member myself and working for working people, representing and organizing workers in about every conceivable classification, from corrections officers to healthcare workers, uh, school bus drivers, highway workers, teachers, educational support professionals in both the public and private sectors. In February 2011, when the right stripping legislation known as Act 10 was introduced by then Governor Walker, thousands of college students and concerned workers took occupation of our state capitol in an effort to derail the legislative process. Emily, our children, our siblings joined immediately in the protest, sleeping on what became known as the slab, uh, marble floors in February in Wisconsin. Uh, very painful and uh, will suck the heat right out of your body. Uh, we slept for 13 straight nights before leaving the premises. But those of us on the inside knew at the time if we held the State House, the balance of power was on our side. Uh, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, living on granola and donated pizzas from around the world. Uh, I've heard from some sisters and brothers here that they had actually sent pizzas to the struggle. It was a tenuous situation at best. About a week into the occupation, at bar time, of course, came incredible banners that said AUPE. From the balcony of the rotunda, I made myself, I made my way down to meet Glenn Scott. Andrew Hannon and Trevor Zimmerman. And those of us inside rejoiced in the expression of solidarity from AUPE and our sisters and brothers here in the distant Northwest. You bolstered our spirits. And let, let me be perfectly blunt and clear. Uh, the local labor leaders of our various unions uh, that were calling the shots at the time, looking back, really didn't understand the dynamic, the lightning in the bottle that they were holding in their hands. Ours was a true uprising of citizens and working people. And today, uh, seven years later, I'm more certain than ever that AUPE's presence and pointed conversations and documenting the answers with various state labor leaders at the time really demonstrated to those calling the shots for organized labor that the whole world was watching. Those who came in contact with the AUPE delegation began scheduling union sleepovers to ensure that our capital would, would remain occupied. And as Brother Smith has indicated, the documentary, Why Wisconsin Matters to Alberta, uh, be became uh, an extraordinary piece of film, uh, Remember and Learn Our Heritage. So it's been an honor and a privilege to experience your determination and courage here to the last couple of days and to reconnect with real, real pals uh, from attending the AUP Labor School back in 2012 uh, up north, um, I was invited there and uh, continue to use the curriculum, the strategies and methodology which uh, I learned from the AUPE Labor School in 2012. It was such an affirming experience uh, that for working people, political action and participation is important and critical but it's not a panacea. We have a shared and glorious heritage, and what I know for sure, direct action always gets the goods. Today, we're seeing the parallels of political attacks on working families uh, in Wisconsin then and Alberta now. With his passage of Act 10, Walker and his old but not so grand political party stripped away 50 years of collective bargaining rights, making it illegal to strike, providing no access to arbitration of disputes, 
and limiting base wage adjustments to the cost of living only. Union security provisions that had been in place for more than 60 years. Payroll deduction of dues and fair share provisions are now illegal. Uh, Kenny's Bill 9 took away arbitration rights. And there's a McKinnon report that wants to take it even further. Limiting your rights to negotiate fair wages and making it illegal to strike. Doing so for workers is like selling you a car without an engine. The fundamental engine that drives collective bargaining is the right to strike. Walker's Act 10 made workers pay more for their pensions and health care benefits. The McKinnon report says you and your families should have your benefits reduced, sinking to lower levels of other provinces. Walker gave away huge corporate tax cuts in Wisconsin while making workers pay more. Kenny has corporate tax cuts in, in Alberta while trying to make workers pay more. And if you're really paying attention, this one should resonate with you very clearly. In 2011, Scott Walker proclaimed that Wisconsin was open for business. Hell, he bolted that disgusting slogan on every welcome sign and leading into the state. Jason Kenney says that Alberta is open for business. Now, as working people, we all know that that's code language, simply meaning you're being robbed with a ballpoint pen. Scott Walker was wrong for quality public services and working families in Wisconsin, and Jason Kenney's wrong for quality public services and working families in Alberta. Scott Walker's divide-and-conquer approach has resulted in the largest decline of union density in a state in recorded history. State labor organizations, such as the one I was employed with in 2011, AFSCME, uh, has experienced a 90 percent reduction in membership. The State Teachers Council in Wisconsin, WEAC, has experienced a 70 percent decline in membership. The devastation nearly complete with right-to-work laws inflicted now upon private sector unions as well. In 2011, the average household in the state experienced a $5,000 decline in take-home pay. Not just union households, all households. Yes, they took away pension rights also of public employees at, uh, hired after the passage of Act 10. Emily, who's here today, uh, works as an environmental health sanitarian. For the first seven years of her work career, keeping food safe to eat and the water safe to drink, she, along with 10,000 other workers, reported to work in Wisconsin's public sector with no old age insurance, no pension. So when they say cut back, we say fight back. When they say cut back, we say? When they say cut back, we say? Right on, sisters and brothers. Right on. Yesterday, yesterday evening, I was uh, blessed with being in the presence of Vice President Karen and Vice President Bonnie. Uh, after the proceedings, and I remarked about the uh, well-run, well-run day. Uh, Bonnie asked me about my convention experience, and my response was, I wish we had AUPE in Wisconsin. I am AUPE. And as has been the sentiment here in this room with each and every one gathered, we remain prepared to do whatever it takes to take back what was taken from us and demand even more in the future for a better world. As Deputy Director of the Teachers Association in Milwaukee, we're fighting back with no collective bargaining rights, 
So even when things get bad, workers are still organizing and winning. We've had to relearn and educate each other about those hard-won lessons of the past, discussing now how to take direct action on the job on a daily basis, how to have meaningful one-on-one -on -one conversations with fellow members and potential members, how to map out our work sites, build relationships and trusts, real pals, and take on the boss by any means necessary. In Milwaukee, proud to say we're at an all-time high membership post Act 10. Workers are now seeing the relevance once again of their union in their lives. And we've debunked the myth of the union as some third party. The union is yours, sisters and brothers. Own it and don't let anyone mess with it. In the U.S., we're seeing the labor movement come back as well, the way my father said it would, in a strike. Workers see other workers taking on the boss and winning, and they think, hey, we can do that too. Following the uprising in 2011, we saw the birth of the Occupy Wall Street movement across the U.S. The Chicago teachers went on strike for the first time in 20 years in 2012. And there's been a constant wave of teacher strikes across the U.S. where there's no right to do so. Oakland, West Virginia, Arizona, Oklahoma, Kentucky, Los Angeles, and in the past two days, Chicago. 40,000 teachers and educational support and professionals have gone out on strike. And surprise, surprise, after this evening, Emily and I will be catching a red eye to Chicago and we'll be at the Teachers Union Hall tomorrow morning. And we're going to be damn sure to give a report out on our experience here the past few days and let everyone know of your struggles and how the movement is now firmly taking root here in Alberta with you at the vanguard. President Guy Smith's report yesterday proffering important lessons on leadership and change and the passage of whatever was passed this morning because I was not in the room. <laughs> We're confident that you're going to continue on and uh, do so in a fashion uh, that's going to build your union and, and provide results for all the members of AUPE. So instead of um, misunderstanding the bonds of solidarity in the past, as we discussed in 2011, uh, there are no stronger bonds of solidarity. Uh, that is the bond above all others. Seven years later, again, proud to say in Milwaukee, we turned 20,000 votes. We've now kicked Scott Walker to the curb. However, the, decks remain, the deck remains stacked in favor of the bosses. We've, we've elected Democrats who still are afraid to restore collective bargaining rights. And after four years of what you call labor-friendly government, uh, I'm being told that perhaps your wages should be frozen, too, by some. Uh, ask yourself if waiting for change in government will fix your problems. Ask yourself if it'll bring about a better future for you and your family. But please re remember the lesson which my grandfather always shared with me, and he was a SWAC organizer in the 1937 steelworkers' strike, where 40, 40 peaceful pickets were on strike for recognition in Chicago, the Memorial Day Massacre. He was a survivor. Remember, if you let your guard down, he said, They'll take everything from you, so don't let your guard down. Now, trade unionists are watching Alberta, and again, why Alberta matters. By standing up together, 
You are writing the next chapter in your destiny, that of your family, your union, and the entire labor movement. So, sisters and brothers, tell me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Tell me what democracy looks like. Tell me again, what does democracy look like? Solidarity forever, sisters and brothers.